Good evening, everyone. Good to see you all this evening. Let's begin the service by taking our hymnals and turning together to number 169. As we sing, Come Thou Fount, 169. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise mine Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come. And I know by thy good pleasure, safely I'll arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace how great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Now back to number 143. Blessed Assurance, number 143. <clears throat> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. 
watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let's take our Bibles at this time for our memory verse and turn with me once again to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 4. Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4. And let's begin. Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said... It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And let's... I pray, shall we? Father, we thank you for the day you've given us. Thank you for this day that commemorates the resurrection of thy son. We never, ever want to forget that. Never want to take it for granted. And Lord, we thank you for these who are here to honor your day. They have made up their minds by way of conviction and by consecration that Sunday would be your day. I pray you bless them for that. I pray you bless those, Lord, who may have turned in on our line this evening. Pray you bless their visit to our church by way of the internet. Pray, Lord, as we open the Bible that you will feed us fresh manna from heaven. For 40 years you fed the people of God in the wilderness. They rebelled, they bickered, they fought, they had enemies, they had faith, they lost their faith. And Lord, just like those children of old in the wilderness, we live in this wilderness world since the fall of Adam. But Lord, we thank you for the last Adam precious Lord Jesus. Pray now that the Holy Spirit will open thy word to us. Pray for each family tonight and those dealing with financial issues, with physical issues, so many. Lord, we live with affliction from the youngest to the oldest. Thank you for your grace that's sufficient. You told Paul, help us now to Listen to your word. Give us hearing ears and obedient hearts. Speak to us. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
You may be seated. Find, if you will, the first chapter of the largest book in the Bible that are known as Psalms chapter 1. Every few years, I like to preach from this formula, and I've been doing that for many, many years, so maybe even more than once a year, I may dial up this psalm. It's a psalm about Christ. It begins with a happy man, ends with a sad man. Psalms 2 is the Antichrist. Begins with a curse, ends with a blessing. So the Psalms are such wonderful, wonderful book. Chapters, I should say, one book, 150 chapters. And they really speak to us. Some of them are what's called messianic psalms that are psalms about the Lord. And this first psalm, we don't have someone here attributed to who was the writer. There are those who would say that Moses was the writer. And it's talking about the happy man. And as you may have remembered from days gone by, the happy man is blessed for what he doesn't do, and then he's blessed for what he does do, and then not only that, but he becomes prosperous because of what he does do. The unhappy man, the sinner, verses four through six is the sinner, Verses 1 through 3 is the saint, and what a contrast it is. Six tremendous verses. Uh, you could put them to memory, and it wouldn't be a hard task, but I think it'd be a blessing to you. So it begins with a happy man. The word blessed there is happy. Happy, happy is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of Jehovah, the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. The leaves are falling. Fall is upon us. One of my favorite times in the year, get to put a sweater on. If you have a fireplace, another log on the fire. And... Um, Short days, long nights. And we're seeing, even as you drive from Thickwood downtown, you're seeing the foolishes beginning to be yellow. I miss the colors from Michigan, where I was born, the, the reds and the oranges. I miss those fall colors. But his leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, here's the promise, shall prosper. And notice the great chasm or contrast. The ungodly. Over and over we find this phrase, this personage. The ungodly, not so. But like the chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, also a promise, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord, Jehovah, knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. May the Lord bless the reading 
And now the preaching of his word. You can go back in your young life, or if you're a little bit older, and you could look at the times when you got wrong counsel. You asked advice, maybe from a professional, maybe from a family member, and you asked advice, and uh, that advice got you in trouble. So the happy man is blessed because he not, does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Find the book of Proverbs with me, please. Proverbs. <clears throat> James says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and that give it to all men liberally, and it broileth not. If you need wisdom, the Lord will give you wisdom. Proverbs has a lot to say about wisdom. And in the beginning chapters of Proverbs, it speaks about a lady referring to wisdom, she. Chapter three. And we all know verse three through seven, or five through seven. Trust in the Lord. Again, we have Jehovah here. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not under thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. That's the Holy Spirit who's the author of the Bible. If you're saved, he lives in you. So if we look to him, learn from him and listen to him. Here's what Solomon wrote. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. Doesn't mean we cower. That means we reverence and respect the Lord. And depart from evil. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. And depart from evil out of the will of God. Jeremiah, I can't help quoting this verse, series of verses over and over, chapter 9. A great outline for you. I had a nice compliment today from one of our young college and careers, and it really was a blessing to my heart. I said last week, usually when we have visitors, they'll say, that's a good message, and you preach the Bible and so forth, and our church family were kind of used to the Bible, and that's good. But this young person said, uh, thank you for that, bless my heart, and that blessed my heart. That was a real blessing unexpected blessing. So here in Jeremiah, and I know our people are Bible people, maybe not all. I've had Sunday school teachers give a testimony and preachers give testimonies. I haven't been reading my Bible, haven't been praying, haven't been witnessing for the Lord. And their life depicts that. We're so inundated with education that we think that people with degrees are who we should listen to. Jeremiah says, verse 23, Thus saith Jehovah, just saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, three things, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am Jehovah, the self-existing God that reveals himself that I am the Lord, which exerciseth 
loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. From these things I delight, saith the Lord. Look at Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Love this chapter. Verse 1. Ho, every man that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Ye come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And you labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness, or blessing, or happiness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader, commander of the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee, because the Lord thy God, Jehovah Elohim, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified me. And what a tremendous tremendous text this is seek ye the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon why What's the problem? What's the issue here? For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Proverbs said, there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Enter you in at the straight gate, Jesus said. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many which go be there, which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few, few, there be that find it. For my thoughts, verse eight again, are not your thoughts; neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways. Than your ways, my thoughts, than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bright, maketh it bring forth and bud, and it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Here it is. So shall my word be. That goeth forth. Out of my mouth. It shall not. Return unto me void. You give out a devotional. If someone will read it. And heed it. They can get saved. If you preach the word. And people don't respond. They're responding inside. God's word will not. Return void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. Do you like that? I like that. It shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. 1 Corinthians. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. 
But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate. Think about it. Memorize. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Not everybody gets saved. People don't get saved all the time. You may have what you think is a dry time. But except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. The Holy Spirit is the soul winner. We're the vessel. And he needs a vessel to go forth and speak his word. So the happy man doesn't fellowship with the ungodly, as I said this morning. Friends and wanting acceptance gets you in trouble. Always gets you in trouble. If you're dead to self and alive by the Spirit, it doesn't matter what people do or they don't do, because you're trusting the Lord. You're living for the Lord. So Paul here has a tall order. A tall order. For the preaching of the cross, verse 18, we're talking about wisdom now and counsel and directions and thoughts. Jesus has a lot to say about our thought life. For the preaching of the cross is them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where are the wise? Where are the scribes, the writers? Where are the disputers of this world, the lawyers, those people who like to argue about things? They learn it in school. Debate, the debate team teach you how to lie, teach you how to cheat. Teach you how to go against authority. Where are the wise? Where are the scribes? Where are the disputers of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? And yet, as I said this morning, how many of God's people want to be worldly minded? Worldly minded. Stay here. Go with me a little further. The Colossians chapter 3. Worldly minded. Daily, we must have our mind saturated. Things go through my mind all day long. Always things are going through my mind. I have to knock them down, not dwell on them, not contemplate. What do they say? Problem you Christians, you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. You can reverse that and say we're so earthly minded, we're no heavenly good. Colossians 3. This is one of my points this morning that I didn't get to. I love it. I love this chapter. If ye then be risen with Christ, that's the crucified life, the resurrected life. Seek those things which were above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection, your thought life on things above, not on things of the earth. For you're dead, should be dead, dead to self. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So, a dead man can't argue, bicker or fight. For you are dead and see it, and your life, and your life is hid with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. The problem is he's not our life. I said this morning, the message this morning was, uh, does he have you? Does he have you? So many of God's people are in the clutches of Satan. And just like Peter, like the chaff, 
the wind driving, driving their lives. And they don't want to stop. They refuse to stop. And we can be a part of that too. When Christ, who is our life, the thief cometh not forth for the steal, to kill and destroy, but I am come that they might have life, eternal life, and that more abundantly. So many, so many of God's people have chosen to live a mundane life, a mediocre life, an on-again, off-again life. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Oh my goodness, going to be a bunch of sad people. Sad people when Jesus comes. Oh, I wish I'd have done more. Oh, I wish I'd have tied. I wish I would have witnesses, worked, worshipped the Lord. Wish I'd have read my Bible. Wish I'd have prayed more. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Keep going. Keep going. 1 John, 1 John, you know when you're feeling a little doubtful about your salvation, dial up 1 John, just dial it up. It's a family book, it's to the family, it's about our fellowship, 1 John chapter 3. Hope this will keep us going for a bit to know what we have in Christ. 1 John 3. Behold, that word behold means to look, to observe, to check out what's going on there or what you're looking at or what you're thinking about. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. God's love, he loves you. Little old you, he loves you, cares about you. Knows all about you. Has your name engraved in his hand. How big is his hand? That we should be called the sons, yes, daughters of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear. That is no soul salvation now. Not waiting. Salvation is instantaneous. Sanctification is day by day as I sanctify myself. I'm coming back Sunday night, coming Sunday morning, coming Wednesday night, coming when the door is open because I'm setting myself apart for the Lord. This old cup has to be cleaned from time to time. Tim Hortons, I don't drink nothing from Tim Hortons. June gave me that when she worked for Tim Hortons. Remember June? How could we forget Larry? <laughs> I still pray for them, of course. But she gave me that. This is my old cup. This is my. This is sanctified. Belongs to moi. I have other cups that folks have given me there in the in the kitchen, but this keeps my tea hot and from time to time, to time I bring those out but this keeps my lungs or my throat open hot Spurgeon said if you're going to preach have a bowl of hot soup with hot pepper to open up your airways sometimes my shirts are too tight I don't understand they keep shrinking I don't understand I don't understand it but I have to have some, especially if I have to lead singing, because you use a different voice. You can always tell Monday if I led singing. Anyway, this is sanctified, that's my point. Set apart for moi. Verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know. We know. Ooh, I like that. 
1 John, no, 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 no. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. But we shall see him as he is. Wow. Woo, I, I can't get my head around that. Going to be wonderful. Verse 3, convicting, verse 3. And every man that hath this hope purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Go well, back to Corinthians. I'm talking about counsel, talking about wisdom, talking about having God's thoughts, his ways, different than my ways, his thoughts than my thoughts. So I got to get my head in tune with his head, have to think like he thinks. And when I look at the world, it's in shambles. It's a mess. Fellow that was sitting over here this morning, first time visitor, Catholic school teacher. <laughs> I talked about teachers this morning, didn't I? <laughs> and I knew he was a teacher because he introduced himself as a teacher. So I could have said, ooh, but I'm not offend him. And he said, I appreciate your candor and I appreciate that you stand for the truth because I left the Catholic Church. What if I'd have been a compromiser? He said, I'm tired of compromisers. He said, and when they started bringing the pride in, I got, I got way away from that. So I don't know if he'll be back, but that was a nice compliment. He said, you preach the word. Well, all church is not like our church. Did you know that? How many of you know that? I, I read something that John wrote when he was right with God years ago. And he said, and I, which you write, I keep. I keep, except the money I spends. But that which you write down, I keeps. And he said, he said, I'm quoting, he said, I found a needle in a haystack. He said, not only are you handsome and adorable, but you preach the Bible. And that's been a long time ago. That was before Jemima. Mm -hmm. So whatever you write down, I keep. So think about that. You have no idea how God blesses our church. Maybe not numerically, because that ain't going to happen, because people don't want to hear the word of God. But you folks who are faithful, and I, I guess I was doing something wrong this morning. I was saying, now, if you've been here for years, stand up. If you've been coming for years, <laughs> the people were. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe I was confusing what I was saying. But, but then I said, all the workers in the church stand up. Behind every good man is a good godly wife, and I thank the Lord I have one. But behind every preacher is God's people that, like Aaron and her, that hold up his arms. I thank you for holding up my arms. And uh, 37 years is a long time. Long time. But you know what? It gets gooder and gooder. It's not a gooder and good vernacular, gooder and gooder. <laughs> Do that on your homework. It got gooder and gooder. <laughs> For after that, in the wisdom of God, verse 21, I'm reading from Corinthians 1, the world by wisdom knew not God. We don't want God in our school. Get him out. Why? Because he exposes us. We don't want him in our government. Why? Because he convicts us. Get him out. And now he's out. And look at the mess the government is in. Look at the mess that the schools are in. Who are you going to vote for? Who are you going to vote for? Does the candidate have character? Does he have morality? Is he an honest politician? Is that possible? So, well, we, we have to take what we get. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have to vote for the duds. And somewhere, maybe there's a 
diamond in the rough yet. I don't know. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God had pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. Not foolish preaching, but people think fool preaching is foolish. They'll find out someday to save them that belief. The Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified under the Jews' stumbling block. Why? They want Judaism. They want Moses. Under the Greeks' foolishness. Think about this for a moment to give you a thought. You go to a psychiatrist, psychologist. They follow Plato, Socrates, Sigmund Freud. You study psychology in school. Psychiatrists is the, is the, is the doctrine and the science of the mind. What do they know about the mind? They bring in names. I want to know what God has to say about my mind because he knows about my mind. I want the mind of Christ to have control of my mind. Not some philosophical thoughts and ideals. And, and people are aghast. Ooh. He's a billionaire. We should listen to him. He, she is a Hollywood actor, actress. They're sports celebrities. We should listen to them. No way. We should listen to the preacher that preaches the word of God. Verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified under the Jews' stumbling block, the Greeks' foolishness, but of them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God, if you're counting that word fool or foolishness, comes up over and over in this context. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, Academia. Wow, he's a PhD. Did you know I'm an earned PhD? I'm a BRE, a THD. I'm a THD. That's a theological degree. You say I'm a thud. I'm a PhD, earned PhD, doctor. Yeah. I preach hell and damnation. PhD. I'm a BRE, Bachelor of Religious Education. <laughs> I'm a sinner that got saved, hallelujah, and I ain't gotten over it. Wow! Going to heaven. Whoa! Can't wait to be able to put on my sweaters. Fall time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just as happy to sit on my throne at home and open the window crack and uh, get all comfortable and open up the book. At that same throne, I get on my knees and I talk to the Lord a bit. And the Lord talks to me a bit. You know what? That makes me happy. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad that I can preach the word of God. What a humbling experience it is. Not many mighty many noble but God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things and things which are despised hath God chosen and things which are not to bring to naught things that are what 
that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God is made into us, watch it, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Now, what does Jesus have to say about this matter of thought? Matthew 6. Remember Naaman, 2 Kings chapter 5. A leper, great general. That little girl told him, go see the preacher. He mistakenly went to the king. What does a little preacher know? We should go to the prime minister. We should go to the potentates. We should go to the president. We should go to those leaders. They're, they can take care of us. Naaman had his entourage, silver and gold, went to the king of Israel. He said, I can't help you. Ooh, wait a minute. But there's a man. <laughs> Thank God for the man. Thank God for the man that won you to the Lord or the lady that won you to the Lord. But there's a man, I know a man, told me all I ever did, not this the Christ. Who said that? A woman of the streets. But I know a man. See, they didn't listen to that little girl like Naaman's wife listened to that little girl. Because that slave girl could have been a rebel, but chose to be godly before her masters. And when that little girl said, I know a man can take care of your husband, heal him, they went to the wrong man. Got to go to the right man. <laughs> He's the right man. <laughs> He's the right man for the job. Wow! King Jesus. Better go down there and see Elijah. Elisha, Elisha, go see Elisha. So he came with his entourage, pulled up in his chariot, all those soldiers, sent one of them, go knock on the door. Elisha sent out his servant, Gehazi. Go tell him to go wash in the Jordan River. That filthy river, probably full of bitumen. Said to my wife, almost, I don't know, 40 years ago, we get to Canada, you can drink out of the river. <laughs> the air is so fresh, <sighs> till it starts raining. <laughs> <laughs> and Sin Crude and Suncor are sending the things there. Honey, did you not check out a house for us? Nope. Nope. Just trust in the Lord. Dear, where are we supposed to live? Trust in the Lord. Is that right? Nothing available. Summer of 85, summer games going on. Nothing available. No internet. No cell phone. <laughs> what would we be without a cell phone? No iPad. The Today paper, which is the slowest paper in the world. Coming down Beacon Hill from Gregoire. Are you sure God called you here? We have no place to stay. Let's go back to Gregoire one more time. I want to buy an apple. It's when I was saved. Now it's chocolate. <laughs> Got the paper. 82 Biggs Avenue. Wow. You know what my favorite color is? It ain't green. <laughs> Anybody know what this is? <laughs> It's called a pay for. <laughs> Hello? Uh -huh. uh, your place is for rent? Uh-huh. We're at the summer games. 
I'll meet you at 10 o'clock. Can you be there at 10? Where? Mm -hmm. Put down a down payment. Got our first place. Went back to Edmonton, loaded up. Came back to 80, 82nd Biggs, 82 Biggs Avenue, where Carlos Moran Sr. would make a walk-in garden in the back of our house. What is a walk-in garden? I'm from Detroit, do I have no garden? A walk-in garden, we're gonna plant stuff. Anyway, we stayed there at that home. And then we met on Franklin Avenue. You've seen the pictures, that sandwich sign. You know the audacity, I never even thought about it. But that sign was right next to Fellowship Baptist Church. I bet you they hated me. Who's this upstart? Thing? And he's an American. And he's right next to us in the Peter Paul. Who does he think he is? To this day, I don't think anybody ever came from Fellowship Baptist Church. Our church, if they did, they ran out the door. I had no thought in my mind because, again, God chooses the foolish things of the world. <laughs> Put up our sandwich sign right there. Get him safe, baptize him Sunday night in the Centennial Pool, which is now gone. It is now, huh? As what? A and W. Can you imagine that? Baptize them for twenty-five bucks in the pool. Come back Sunday night, have the Lord's Supper. More sure good back then. Wasn't it good back then? So, how's it, gonna, how's it gonna happen? Think about when you came to Fort McMurray, you came fighting. I ain't going there. Remember that? I ain't going there. Linnaeus, I ain't going there. Fort McMurray, you're taking me from my family. What do they have there? If you knew that this lovely place was here with this lovely man, you'd have ran. <laughs> you see, our thoughts are not his thoughts, but he has it all in control. One last point and we'll be done. <laughs> Matthew 6. Anyway, Naaman, let's get back to Naaman. <laughs> what happens to Naaman? He ducked seven times, ducked down in a dirty pond, and came up plain because he went to the man of God. Now, what are we going to do about food? Do they have food in Fort McMurray? Clothing, shelter. I don't know what we're going to do, dear. What have you done? Verse 25. Matthew 6. Therefore I say to you, take no, huh? help me now, thought for your life. What you shall eat, or what you shall drink, or yet for your body what you should put on. Is not life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet... Your heavenly Father feedeth them. Hey, I have a heavenly Father. He knows all about it. Sees all, hears all, and he knows all. Your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not more better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto a statue? And why take ye thought for the raiment? Consider the lilies of the fields, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, take a lily, take the finest silk ever spun, put them under a, a, a magnifying glass or a microscope. Which one do you think looks the best? You got it, the lily. The lily. 
Even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? Here's the problem. Oh, you, Peter, you, Peter. Satan hath designed to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for thee. I prayed for your faith, Peter. I prayed for your faith, Peter. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Well, it shall be clothed. For after all these things that the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Here it is. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Thank the Lord. For each of you who came out on the Lord's Day. Sunday's the Lord's Day, a beginning of a new week. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You take care of him, he'll take care of you. He's got a bigger purse than you do. All these things should be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. Every day I am now pleading the blood over my home. I go through my home. Not physically walk through it, but I go through it in my mind. I start with the attic. I go to the two upper bedrooms and closets, the bathroom, the linen closet, the hallway, the stairway, the living room, the dining room, the front door, the door wall, the closet, the kitchen, the stairway, the back door, the bottom basement, bedroom, the office, the bathroom, the hallway, the stairway, the basement, the furnace room, the laundry room, the wall behind that, and I plead the blood. God's blood to watch over our home. Be good for you to walk through your house sometimes singing, What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Because you bring in garbage. You bring in garbage into your home. So I plead the blood. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow should take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. What's your point, preacher? Give it to him. Give it to him. The happy man is happy because of what he does not do. What she does not do. What they do not do and what they do. His delight is in the book. The book. You cannot get enough of this book. So get your thought right, life right. I quoted this morning, I quoted in closing. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, what's your things are true? What's your things are honest? What's your things are just? What's your things are pure? What's your things are lovely? What sort of things are of good report? If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. That's all about Jesus. Keep your mind fixed on Jesus. Had Eve kept her heart fixed upon the Lord, she'd have never touched that fruit. Doubt. Doubt never did anything but put you in dismay and depression. Shall we stand together? So many young people, so many young people in depression have some family members in the States, handsome young men, handsome, tall, handsome young men, depressed, depressed. They don't know the Lord depressed.
But how many Christians are depressed? Read the Bible. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou dismayed. Trust in the Lord. Commit to the Lord. Delight the Lord. Trust in him daily. Stay in the book. Stay in the book. Thank you for coming tonight. Let's pray. What a reservoir of wisdom is this Bible. Full to overflowing. And then the Holy Spirit, like an artesian well, bubbling up, bubbling, bubbling, flowing through us through the power of the Holy Spirit. We have him. We have the book. We have the Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Angels watch over us. The promises in this book for fear, for doubt, for depression, for perplexity, for lack of faith. We have this book. Help us to keep on keeping on. And why would the Holy Spirit, Father, write, when your son comes, will he find any faith? Because there's sure not a whole bunch of faithful people being faithful. Help us to be faithful. Help us to keep on keeping on and being faithful. We don't have a college to draw from. These colleges, and thank you for some of them, but Lord, they got a good thing going. Every four years, they get a new crop. They work in the nursery, they work in the bus route, they go knocking doors, they teach Sunday school classes, and they perpetuate those churches attached to those schools. And Lord, sometimes those schools become the tail that wags the dog. But Lord, we have us. This handful on this corner. Pretty good corner. Pretty good corner that you've given to us. A corner in Fort McMurray. And thank you for our church family. Lord, there's other places, bigger places, louder places, more prominent people so-called that go to these places. But Lord, before you as my witness tonight, on the eve of the 37th year of Gail and I serving in Fort McMurray, I thank you for her. I thank you for my family. I thank you for our church family. Lord, help us to keep on keeping on. Help us to believe your word, to be steadfast, unmovable. Lord, I, I draw strength through preaching. I preach myself right. <clears throat> Lately, I've been listening a lot to other preachers. Not because I'm down, but because I want to listen. And then, Lord, every Sunday morning with fear and trepidation, these folks have no idea. You do. You know. I walk behind this sacred desk. And with fear and trepidation, deliver the message. And then, regardless of what happened Sunday morning, we show up Sunday night. And regardless of what happened Sunday night, we show up Wednesday night. And Lord, that's really all you want for us to show up. Because when we show up and you're here, you do something special to our soul and spirit. I pray that you've done that tonight. God, help us. Is the Emmanuel Baptist Church relevant? was going to be my message this morning. Is it relevant? 
the decaying place that was here before we came here. That's just what happened. It decayed. Eleven short years it was done for. Changed the name several times. A changing of a name on a building does not necessitate a real Bible-believing, Bible-preaching family of God. Help us to keep on being faithful. And thank you for our family. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Preacher, pray for me tonight. Maybe God spoke to your heart about your walk with him. Preacher, remember me in closing prayer tonight. Pray for me. God spoke to my heart tonight. God spoke to my heart. Amen. God bless you. And Father, thank you for your love to us. But I don't expect people to understand, but I live when I'm preaching. I love it. I thank you for it. I thank you for our church family. Help, Lord, those who may stay behind and play some games, have a little bit of fellowship that they want to stay. If not, we'll just go on. Lord, get us home safely and then bring us back when the door opens. Help us to be spirit-filled, armor-protected, Bible offensive weapon this week. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Good night. Thank you for coming.